Hi, I'm Michael Jacoby, and I'm here above Silver City, New Mexico, in Grant County in the Gila National Forest. Elevation is about 6,700 feet. We're near an area called Pinos Altos, which means tall pines. And then you can see behind me, probably, these Apache pines and other conifers and oaks and such that are indeed very tall. But this video isn't about trees. This video is about a very special tarantula, perhaps the most beautiful of our American species, Aphenopelma marxi. This is a gorgeous tarantula. This is about half grown. They are very black when they're freshly molted and have beautiful orangish red hairs on the abdomen and on the legs. It is a high altitude species and is the primary species in the Marxi group that's named for it, which includes some other Sky Island species such as Aphenopelma palancio, Aphenopelma chiricahua, Aphenopelma madera and the lowland member of the group, which is Aphenopelma voorheesi, as well as a couple others. So, this video we're going to look at them in the field. Now that those motorcycles have gone by, we're up here near Pinos Altos, above Silver City, New Mexico, in great territory for Aphenopelma marxi. The first spider was about half grown or so. This one's slightly smaller. The first one took a little bit of flushing. 
it is midday, so even though there is some cloud cover, they're not really too keen to come flying out of the holes as they would be at dusk or at dark. So we're going to do a little flushing, see if we can get this one to come forward as well. And there, hopefully you can see the legs as it came forward, thinking that a flash flood had just happened. The earth's dry enough to where the water gets abs absorbed pretty quickly. And it's... Hopefully you can see its front legs. It's definitely going for the bait of this stick, but it's not thinking that it's a meal. It's thinking it's just a nuisance, which is exactly what it is. See how quickly the earth absorbs that water. And the burrow, of course, is pretty deep. There we go. Gorgeous spider, probably the most beautiful tarantula in the United States. I'm sure people would argue Athenopelba moderatum. Some people like Calcodes. I happen to have a soft spot for Athenopelma pelincio. But uh, this is the, uh, the spider here. Let me see if I can focus it in there. The spider here. So Marxy gives its name to the Marxy group of Sky Island tarantulas that includes spiders like Aphenopelma pelincio, Aphenopelma chiricawa, and Aphenopelma madera, which I mentioned in a recent British Tarantula Society article that I wrote that came out in the new issue. Today is October 2nd, 2018. So this species is actually found throughout the Colorado Plateau. Um, it ranges throughout many areas. It's found north of here in Taos, New Mexico. This area here close to Silver City is another little stronghold, but it is found out in the steppe closer to the Grand Canyon in Colorado as well. So this was number two of the day. And let's put her right back in the hole as soon as I focus on it. And now she's got a little extra humidity. Come on, don't you want to go home? I know there's a few people watching this video that are probably like, well, don't put it home, bring it home to me. Uh, no, thank you. Keeping it where it belongs. <laughs> All right, little girl. Get your butt down in that hole. <laughs> Confession is that I kind of obscured this hole a little bit when I was filming the first spider, which that burrow is just slightly above this one. There you can see that first burrow. There's our spider trying to wander between. Here's her burrow, which I'm going to chase her down and put back in. There she goes. Back into the hole. See you, little guy. All right, here's another burrow. We're about 300 yards or so down the road from where we were before. Um, again, this is October 2nd, 2018. And those of you who follow both myself and Brent Hendrickson online, Instagram and Facebook, will know that he was just here yesterday. I've been here uh, a couple times before with Brent. 
and he's been here numerous times. So he was here last night as part of his uh, another extended field trip, and he said that he had seen a bunch of spiders. So that's what prompted me to make the trip up today. So this burrow he actually marked with a good old can of Bud Light American Swill. And this spider perhaps is a little bit larger, so we'll see if we can get her out and take a look at her. Uh, I said I was going to double check the altitude for you. Right now, hopefully the rain won't come because it's threatening. It keeps going from sunny to very cloudy and looking like I'm about to get drenched. Um, I use the Gaia GPS app to record um, GPS coordinates, and then I also use it for the altitude, um, although I also use my Sunto Core wristwatch, which also has an altimeter, so I'll calibrate it to that and compare the two. But I said before we were about 6,000, so I completely underestimated. We're at 6,700 feet. So once again, this species is a high altitude species um, that kind of leads this group, the Marxi group, of other Sky Island tarantulas, uh, meaning Madeira, Pelincio, and Chiricahua, from the Pelincio Mountains to Chiricahua Mountains, and Madeira Canyon in the Santa Rita Mountains. And there's a couple other species as well. The low altitude member of that group would be Aphidopelma vorhesi, which is very widespread in a bunch of different habitat. That's the spider you may see me commonly post from Cave Creek Canyon in the Chiricahuas at around 4,500 feet or so. Um, that is the kind of the low elevation member of this group. All the group are pretty much dark tarantulas with reddish abdomens. Uh, the males are black with fiery red or orangish hairs. Um, but enough of my yapping, let's uh, play with this spider. You may notice that there's no silk over the hole, and there was no silk over the hole when I came up upon her. I saw her legs at the entrance here, 1 o'clock in the afternoon or so. Like I said, there's some pretty good cloud cover, but they don't always cover their burrows with silk unless they're going to be in them for a while, such as when they molt or when they're digesting a big meal. There's a little liquid encouragement, as they say. This is a pretty big, deep burrow. Let me get my flashlight out, but that barely even phased her. I didn't see any legs. Oh, there she is. Yeah, it goes straight back about six inches. Then it bends to the right, our right, and then starts to descend a little bit. So I've got about three quarters of a gallon of water here. I'm going to add another quarter gallon or so. <laughs> and she's still st sitting in the same part, about eight inches back into the burrow. I may have to get in your way a little bit here. Mas agua, por favor. For those of you going, don't drown her, uh, that water is getting absorbed so quickly and there's probably about two feet of hole, whoops, sorry, bumped the camera, two feet of hole behind her. And for one, those of you that are wondering about digging them out of their burrows, I'm not a collector. These spiders are going back in their homes, and I'd rather put them back in the home the way they built it. There are times, like when we're on trips around the world, where we really want to see a spider bad enough to dig them out and then try to reconstruct their hole as best as possible, or just hope that they can build another one from a little starter hole. But these spiders, I have no intention of digging out. It's a beautiful species, and if she doesn't come out, then, hey, she won the game. She gets to stay in there without any more hassle from me. All right, I'm feeling raindrops, and I don't like that around my camera gear, so we may be pausing for a little while and coming back to her. 
like I said, this one is marked by a beer can. And the rain's picking up, so we're going to cut here and come back. As you can see here, it's now raining pretty good. So I'm going to drive about a half hour back to town to get a cup of coffee and take it from there. See you in a bit. All right, we're back. It's a couple hours later, and I am fueled by a couple of shots of espresso. The rain has stopped. Before I started filming this burrow, I did collect, or at least capture, a third Aphidopelma marxi, and that is the spider that you saw at the beginning of the video when I did my little introduction. So I got it out of its burrow while it was still raining so I couldn't film, um, so I could make the most of the time. So now we're back with another burrow here, and I haven't even seen its occupant yet, so we're going to take a peek. You'll note again that it does not have silk covering the entrance, which as I said earlier, could be just that it is not in a molt and it is not full of food and it is actively hunting. And it also may be that it has been a little rainy, so last night it might not have had a chance to cover it with silk, or this morning it could have already been brushed away. So none of the burrows so far have had silk on them. And here comes another car, so you can hear how close I am to the road. We're just on upper road embankment here. Shine my flashlight in and see what I see so far. A whole lot of nothing. I did go back to that reluctant spider's burrow that we were looking at before the rain started. And she's still pretty reluctant. So we're going to use her as a last resort. We've already gotten three out. Two that you've seen come out of the burrow. She's just in kind of a problematic area and likes to rest a little bit deep for tickling. All right, I see legs. So we've got a spider home here. Uh, I think I'm going to just keep using some water here and see what happens. Yeah, there's another spider in there. I don't know how big it is yet, but it's at least mature or close to mature. I believe that last night Brent Hendrickson was actually out here after dark when these spiders would have been active and sitting at their burrow mouths. So he had a little bit more fun. I was tempted to stick around until tonight to do the same. But I left early this morning and you know, I don't think I want to stay that long. I don't know if you just saw those legs come out, but it was pretty close to the front and it is an adult. And here it is at the mouth. You can see with my flashlight on there. Let's see if we can get behind it a little and encourage it to come see the sunshine. Come on, you can do it. And there you go. After the oh! <laughs> well, we might just leave it at that. I always respect a smart spider like that and give it its birth. We don't really need to take it out again, but... I do have a little water left. Let's see if we can make it come forward. There you go. At least you could probably see it again. So yeah, another nice Aphidopelma marxi. I do kind of want to get a still photograph of it, so I may be a little persistent, especially since it seems to like the tickling. It's definitely striking my stick, grabbing it with its fangs. These burrows, all of these burrows today, they go in kind of shallow and then they turn to one direction right away so they're not going like straight down or even angling at a 45 degree angle back they're kind of turning six inches six inches in or so or whatever units you use in the country you live in this is america here again well that was the last of my tarantula water which means this gallon jug is about 3.78 liters for you euro types this is my drinking water. So this has actually been in my cooler, so I'm gonna take a big gulp first, and then unfortunately this spider's gonna get a little bit of a chill when this goes down its hole. I don't know if that'll make it more likely to come out or less likely. Oh, there she is. Store. And there it is. Let's see if I can get behind it again, if I can find a good twig. Use more water.
All right, this time. It's hard for me to focus this, but that is a gorgeous spider. But let's put this girl back where she came from. Alright, thanks to all these spiders for putting up with my nonsense, and thanks to you guys for watching. Peace.